Well, hello there, everybody. If you are new here, my name is Kristana and I am the owner and creator of Bella Renovare by Kristana. This is my YouTube channel, so welcome, welcome, welcome. If you're not new here, welcome back, friends and family. I say this every time, but truly, I appreciate you, so thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. If you are not subscribed, hit the subscribe button. What are you waiting for? Especially if you've watched a few videos. Anyways, if you are not subscribed, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell, and you'll get all the latest videos I put out every week. These videos in the description, I always put what I use. There are links that you can click if you want. I do appreciate you when you order from the links, but um, this will take you to where you need to go so that you can get the products if you want to recreate the looks that I do, or you don't have to use the colors I use. You can just appreciate the process and use your own colors. Today we are going to be doing a piece. This piece behind me is a custom. This is for a client and this is for her daughter picked out the colors, but we are going to be doing new hardware. So if you guys have seen my pieces before, I have used dowels and then reducing copper, copper piping, reducing tees. We're going to make kind of like, um, we're going to do new hardware and then we're going to pull out that top drawer that's black that I painted and was messing around with. We're gonna pull that out. We're going to make a platform so that way she can put baskets because she's a basket lover and we are going to make it bright and colorful for her. She is a sweet, sweet little girl. She's a sweet kid and I just wanna make this really perfect for her. So stay here if you guys wanna see what I am going to do. The first thing I did was remove the top drawer. We are gonna make a little platform for that so that my client's daughter can put her baskets on there and it's gonna look super cute. I'm also gonna remove all of the old hardware. I am going to create new hardware, which I will show you in a little while. So I'm gonna plug one of those holes with our two part wood filler and we're only gonna use one of the holes. So I just showed you how light this dresser is. I picked it up and put it on my saw horses because we are gonna fix this chipping veneer, which is a lot of it. When there's a lot of chipping veneer, I like to use a two part wood filler. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my metal scraper and I'm going to scrape off all of the loose veneer. I'm not gonna get underneath and try to pry it off. Just anything that's already loose, I'm gonna take off and then I'm going to sand it because we wanna prep the surface, make sure that it is stable. We don't wanna be putting two part wood filler over flaking veneer that's loose. So I'm getting any of the loose veneer off. I'm not gonna try to pry off any of the stuff that's not loose. And then I'm going to sand it smooth to prep the surface. And then we will mix a two part wood filler and we're gonna put it on there. Think of like icing a cake. That is what I think of whenever I'm using any kind of wood filler. So I'm sanding it right now so that I can make this surface smooth so we don't have any hard lines to fill. And then we're going to go in with our two part wood filler. You can use Bondo. I think Minwax has a two part wood filler. This is a German brand, anything will do. So you take the stuff that's in the container and then there's a little tube of a hardener and you're going to fold that in. You do not need a lot of that hardener. You have about 10 minutes to work with this before this dries super hard. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this plastic spatula and I'm just going to smooth it on there like I'm icing a cake. I usually let it sit for about an hour to an hour and a half so it's super hard before I go in and start sanding it. There was contact paper inside of the drawers and so I'm gonna pull that out. I'm gonna show you how I'm just gonna refresh these drawers. It's super easy to do. There's not a lot of damage inside of them, but if there was stains, then I would sand the inside of them, but I do need to get that residue off. So I'm gonna use Goo Gone and I'm just gonna spray it on there, allow it to sit for about five minutes. 
and then you just wipe it away with a paper towel. It says white towel on the direction, so I use one of the white paper towels. I'm sure it doesn't really matter, but I followed the directions. So I wiped it away, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to clean the dresser drawer inside and out with Dixie Belle's White Lightning, and I'm gonna clean it all, and then I will go over that whole drawer again with clean water and a clean rag just to get any residue off. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to condition the whole drawer inside and out with Dixie Belle's Big Mama's Butter, which will condition the wood, give it a nice smell, deodorize it, and it will just, it'll just freshen it up. It's a really good idea to do to the drawers of the pieces of furniture that you're using or working on, especially if they're customs or you're gonna sell them. You may not think it's a big deal, but it is a big deal because if someone looks at your work and then opens this and it's got like really ugly drawers and stains, it could deter them. So this is, a super important part of you doing stuff as well. So you're going to put the Big Mama's Butter on and then you're going to wipe away all the excess right away so that it has time to soak in. I'm also going to put this on the drawer slides. This is a little tip. It will help your drawer slides go a lot smoother if you put it on there. I did want to tell you guys before I go any further that when I picked up this piece for my client, so when she loaded it into her car, she said, I did not realize how rough it was. So this was her grandparents and she got it from them and she's had it for a while and she wanted to redo it and her daughter has claimed it. But she said, if you get it and you feel like it's too much or it's not worth painting, just let me know. I said, I like a challenge. No furniture is worth not painting. We're not throwing this away. This is not going in a landfill. So, Besides cleaning the front of the drawers with the white lightning, it is ready for me to paint it and we're going to build a shelf up here, but I wanted to show you all the things that we fixed and just to say, this was a challenge and I'm excited for it. What I did is I removed, I used my mini pry bar and I removed that drawer slide in the center of that top drawer, that pre-existing top drawer. And what I'm gonna do is measure it length to width. So that way I know how much wood I need for this because I'm going to use just one bys. So I'm gonna use my scrap wood that I have downstairs. I've got some one by fours down there and I'm gonna use that to build the shelf. I'm going to have the wood going horizontal because I would like for this the rounded side of the wood to match up to that so it looks neater. I don't want to go vertical because I don't want to see a bunch of planks. So I'm going to have the wood go vertical. So right now I'm measuring and I'm writing it down so I don't forget. I'm going to take this these measurements downstairs and I'm going to cut my wood with my miter saw and then I'm gonna bring it upstairs and we are going to fit it. I'm gonna show you how to fit it and notch things out using a speed square. Okay, so when you put that one by four to the back, there is those little notched parts and so it doesn't go all the way flush. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna push that speed square all the way to the back and we're going to actually mark on the speed square with our pencil where it needs to be cut. So right there, that mark, cause that, that speed square was flush with the back, that mark right there tells me that that is how much I need to cut off coming in from there. So we're going to bring it out and we're going to mark across. That is, we'll call that the width is what we have to do. That's the width of it. And then we're going to mark right here, the length of it. So we're gonna butt up that speed square right against where it lines up with that part that's coming out. And so you see right there, we have that etched out right there. So we've got the length and the width. And I'm going to cut this with a jigsaw and then we're going to fit it. We're gonna do this on both sides and then we're gonna fit it and see if it worked, if it looks good or not. Okay, here's the moment of truth. I always dry fit everything to make sure before I permanently secure it. So we're gonna push it back there and see if we notched it out correctly. And we did, bingo! So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put all the other boards in there just to see where we're at, we're gonna have to put them in there because I'm going to have to cut the front board as well.
Okay, so now we have to cut the front board. I'm just gonna flip it up instead of using the speed square and just flip it up and then mark it because this is actually flush with both of the sides. And so I'll know that that is the part that I have to notch off. But now I'm going to measure on the speed square what that width is of that little trim piece that's in the front. And so you see, I mark the speed square. I'm erasing my first mark. <laughs> And I'm marking it and then I'm going to mark the board and then I'm going to cut that and we are going to dry fit it to see if it worked. Now that I have dry fitted it, I am going to pull all the boards out and I'm going to use some wood glue around the edges. And this is just a German brand. This is a fast setting one. You can use whatever wood glue you want. And I'm going to put all those boards back in there. And that way we have glue set down. And then I am going to hand brad nail some brad nails in there as well. And that will double secure it. And then our shelf will be secure and she can set all the baskets her heart desires on those shelves. I will tell you that with these shelves, I ended up making sure I sanded everything smooth with the 220 grit and I sealed them in with Big Mama's Butter. So that's what I did with that shelf. I left it natural. Now we're gonna go in with Cristana Purple. You guys remember this color, Cristana Purple? This is an equal parts of Dixie Belle's Amethyst and Dixie Belle's Plum Crazy, which I have now dubbed Cristana Purple. So I'm gonna do a diagonal blend on here. So we're starting at the corner doing Cristana Purple. Then we're gonna do Amethyst butting that up right against there. And then I'm gonna go in with Peacock and I'm going to put that Peacock next to the Amethyst. So my client's daughter, her favorite colors are teals and purples. And so I thought they just gave me free reign to do this. And the only thing, her only request was th these colors. And that really wasn't a hard request. And than the hardware. She really liked that dowel hardware that I made with the other piece. So that is why we did the dowel hardware on this piece. But I went a little bit bigger with the dowels on this and I think it turned out really cute. So I also used Plum Crazy on here and that went to the very top corner and on the top of this piece. And then I also did random areas on the sides as well. The rundown of products is Peacock by Dixie Belle, Amethyst by Dixie Belle, Plum Crazy, and then Cristana Purple, which is the mix. You're gonna need a mister bottle and an extra rag and a clean dry neutral brush, and we are gonna start blending. So I'm gonna miss the area, and this is Amethyst and Plum Crazy right now. We're gonna add some wet paint with the Amethyst on that little transition line. And once we do that, then we are going to go in with the Plum Crazy and we are going to add some paint on there. Now I do missed it. The sun was shining in there. It's a little bit warm today. So you really have to gauge how much water you need when you're blending by the atmosphere that you are in. If it's super dry, you're gonna use more water. If it's super humid, you may not need as much water because your paint isn't gonna dry as fast. But after we took the Plum Crazy, I started just kind of blending them in together and you're gonna use that towel. Now, when you blend with purples, it is really important to have a rag because purple likes to take over. And so you're able to wipe off the excess purple on the brushes that aren't a purple color. And this will keep your blend from muddying together. So what I did is I went and add a little bit more amethyst over very far to the left. And now I'm going to mist it. I'm going to add some more plum crazy over to the right because I want to keep those colors still vibrant. I don't want to muddy them too much. And so I'm blending the transition line and then I go over to the very far right and the very far left to add the colors that they were 
to minimize the muddying. I really hope that makes sense. And now I'm taking the clean dry neutral brush. I'm going to mist it and then I'm going to feather these together. These two colors blend really, really nice together. Super easy to blend with each other. Now I'm going to go in with Cristona purple and amethyst, and we are going to blend these. It's the same concept. We're going to put some wet paint right there on the transition line with the Cristona purple. And then we're going to go in, we're going to put some amethyst on that line as well. And we're going to start blending. That's the key to blending is having wet paint. So I'm going to pull the drawer out so that we don't end up painting on the little shelf that we made. We don't want to get paint on there. Otherwise I'm going to have to re-sand it and fix it. So now I'm adding some amethyst on there and we're just kind of, I'm just kind of flicking it because I'm trying to blend it a little bit already. I'm going to clean off my brush. I'm going to go in with the amethyst and I'm going to go the opposite direction. And that way I can kind of clean up that area because that plum crazy went over there a little too much. So I want to keep that true purple away from the transition line. So now I'm going to go in with my plum crazy brush and I'm going to feather that transition line, go up and down and vertical and diagonal, and this will help blend it. I'm going to do some circles and we're just trying to feather this. And again, these two colors are super easy to blend together. Remember when you're blending, you always want to use a light hand. Now we're going to blend our peacock and our amethyst together. So we're going to miss the area. And again, we're going to put wet paint on our transition lines. I'm going to move over that transition line just a little bit with the amethyst. Sometimes when you are blending and you go in to blend the actual transition line after you've had dry paint, you see a line. Sometimes you work it so much that you, there's this dry line that you can't get rid of. All you have to do is overlap that line a little bit and go into the other color just slightly and that will get rid of that really annoying line. If you've ever blended, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's happened to everybody and that is my cure for it. So now we are putting Peacock right there on that transition line that we have pushed over and we're kind of just feathering that in there. We don't wanna to pull too much of that purple, so I'm just trying to keep it as blue as I possibly can. I don't wanna take that purple and just start pulling it over because it will just take over. So I'm being a little bit conservative when it comes to blending this blue and this purple together. We're just kind of adding that blue in the areas where the purple took over a little bit more. We're gonna mist it, and then I'm gonna take my amethyst, and I'm just gonna to try to work that transition line. I'm not going to go too far into that blue because again, I don't want a lot of that purple coming over into the blue. I really want to keep these colors blended, but separate, if that makes sense. I don't want that purple to take over. So I'm just lightly using the amethyst and every single time that I brush it on there, I wipe my brush off and now I'm going in with my peacock brush and I'm going to wipe it off because I don't want that purple to take over. And I'm just going to lightly feather it over. So this is going to give us more of a cloudy type blend just because I really don't want that purple to take over this entire piece.
I'm gonna seal this piece with Easy Peasy Spray Wax. It is a clear matte wax and you spray it on there and you're gonna rub it in with a towel and it will dry and it will cure super hard and it will help protect this piece. Now we are going to make the new hardware. So you are going to need a dowel. I used a 16 millimeter dowel. You're gonna need two copper reducing tees, copper piping reducing tees. Those are 18 millimeter. That dowel sticking in there is an 18 millimeter. Two wood screws. I like fast setting glue and then I'm going to paint this so I'm going to have gold spray paint and then I also have a sealer spray paint. I'm going to spray paint over the copper reducing tees with my gold spray paint and you don't want to just directly sit on top of these. You want to kind of fan your paint over them and just thin layers because otherwise it's not going to look nice. You don't want to glop it on there. You always want to seal it. I'm using a spray sealer for spray paint and I'm going to seal these in so that way I don't have any problems with chipping or anything like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the dowels. So these are the 16 millimeter dowels that I'm going to cut. And I like to mark my dowels with a piece of tape because it goes around the entire thing and I can just visualize it a little bit better. Once I have measured them, then I will cut them with my jigsaw with a wood blade. I'm going to show you how I measure the little 18 millimeter wooden dowel. So I'm going to stick it in that end of the reducing tea that's going to be flush against the drawer and you don't want it to go past there. And so you want it in there just enough that it is going to fill that hole, but it's not going to go past it. So it's not going to bump up against the other dowel. I'm going to mark it with a pencil and that's where I'm going to cut that. So now I'm going to go in and I'm going to cut my dowels and get them ready so that we can assemble this. Make sure that you sand the handle edges if they are a little bit rough so that it makes it smooth and more professional. Now I'm gonna come inside and I'm gonna use a paper towel because we are going to put these little wooden dowels in here. So I'm gonna use my fast setting glue and I am going to put this in the area that is going against the drawer front. So it's gonna be the top of the T, okay, or the I guess it's the bottom of the T, depending on which way you put it. And so we're going to put a bunch of glue around the edge and I'm going to put that dowel in there. It should fit very snug and tight. And then if you need to, if you can't push it down, just lightly tap it with your hammer to get it down there. If you've cut it perfectly, then it shouldn't go past the area where the other dowel is going to go in there. Now I'm going to make a pilot hole for my screw or for my drill. I do this because if you just go in and drill, you could drill in the wrong place. So doing a pilot hole for your drill will help your drill stay where it needs to go. And then we are actually drilling a pilot hole for the screw. So we're making a pilot hole for what we're doing is we're doing a punch. So we did a center punch, we're doing a pilot hole. That way we can screw the wood screws into there. This is oak, so it's a hard wood and it just allows it to help screw in there a little bit easier. You wanna wait for these to fully dry before you start assembling them. You're gonna put those copper piping tees on the dowel and I am going to screw these in there, but not super tight. I want to be able to adjust the dowel so that it's even on both sides. So I'm going to screw them in there so that way it holds, but I'm not going to make them super tight because I still need that dowel to be able to move. You want to use a long enough wood screw that not only is that wood screw going to go through that dowel that we created, but it's going to go through the actual dowel in the front to hold it in place so that it does not move. So hopefully that makes sense. It's gonna be different for everybody depending on the thickness of the drawer that you're doing, the size of the dowel you're using, the size of the copper piping tee you're using. So right now I'm making sure that it's even on both sides before I permanently secure my wood screws into it.
So to tie the gold in together, we're gonna use some gold gilding wax. I'm just gonna kind of dust feather it on. I'm not gonna use tons. And that is going to create kind of like a little shimmer on here and it's gonna tie in that gold on the hardware. And then this piece is done. And it's her birthday tomorrow. So her mom's gonna wait and show her tomorrow and I hope she loves it. I hope she love, love, loves it. So happy birthday, sweet girl. I hope you love this piece and thank you guys so much for watching. And I hope you guys have an awesome weekend. Okay, everybody, so this piece is done. This video is done. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Here is the piece. We got a little cloudy type blend going on, a little diagonal blend. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you're not subscribed, make sure you're subscribed. There, sorry, I'm a little out of focus. If you're not subscribed, make sure you're subscribed. Remember, everything I use is always in the, in the description below. Have an amazing weekend, everybody, and I will see you next week. Happy creating and bye-bye. Hey, darling, can I tell you what's been on my mind? Sick and tired of the nine to five in the city light. Hey, darling, we could get out of town. See the beautiful world around, want to see it now. And get in that car Leave a little note and we'll drive real far Let's get out, we can leave this city Let's drive to the open air Yeah, the countryside is so pretty